Hi there. Welcome to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. This podcast is all about creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about the field of health informatics. I hope to share information and advice in topics such as health analytics, digital health, biomedical engineering, and data visualization in healthcare. And in exchange, I would love to hear from you, dear listener, about your experience and interest in this field. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. And this email, along with any references discussed during this podcast, will be listed in the show notes below. If this resonates with you, don't forget to follow and subscribe to this podcast, as I'll be releasing new episodes bi-weekly. So I want to discuss one of the most critical and consistent issues in health informatics, which is interoperability. I want to address the importance of interoperability in its own separate episode, because if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you would know that I always try to loop in the topic of interoperability when I am interviewing guests on the show. In my opinion, I believe that interoperability is the foundation for advancing clinical decision support tools such as healthcare chatbots, the EMR or EHR, mHealth apps, predictive algorithms, and the list goes on. Without an interconnected system and a way to integrate various forms of unstructured and structured healthcare data into a centralized system, this really might stagnate progress. So first, what is interoperability? So interoperability can be defined as the ability for multiple computer systems to exchange information across platforms and to use this information to drive outcomes. So why is interoperability even important in health informatics? It's critical because of the multiple sources of data which feed into EMRs or EHR systems. Some of these sources can come from administrative claim databases, laboratories, imaging systems, medical devices, and consumer devices. And this past couple of years have resulted in a boom in consumer devices, things like Fitbits, outputting real-time health data, and various mHealth apps. So in the future, being able to connect into this real-time patient-generated data directly into the EMR or EHR will help to tell the full story of the patient and not just a little snapshot of their story. So interoperability is important because in order to get clear insights from the data, we need to ensure that the data is clean and in the proper format. We also need to be aware of the risks of privacy and security breaches that might arise from accessing sources of data from multiple different inputs. So I hope I've convinced you a bit about the importance of health informatics and interoperability. And furthermore, connected systems and interoperability can help to reduce physician burnout. So having patients have their consolidated health information in one system, regardless of if the patient visited one healthcare provider or their primary healthcare provider, can help to reduce duplication of medical tests and costs and can help to reduce the amount of data entry and burden that can fall on the shoulders of clinicians so they can focus on their patients instead of just their screens. And let's not forget the cost savings. So according to a study done in 2018 by Gardner for Canada Health Infoway, interoperability contributes approximately to $1 billion worth of healthcare system value. It also saves the equivalent of 25 lifetimes of patient time per year. So you have both cost and time savings. So, okay, I've said all these benefits and I've talked about the reasoning behind why interoperability is so important. So why haven't we reached that stage yet? Well, there are some really important barriers to interoperability. So as most things, the concept is simple, but the execution is difficult. Some of the barriers to interoperability in healthcare include financial costs required to integrate healthcare systems, privacy and government regulations to ensure healthcare data is protected and will not result in major breaches, a lack of involvement of clinical stakeholders when building these integrated systems, which can lead to reduced rates of adoption, and lack of incentives for healthcare providers. And these are just a few major barriers to implementing interoperability standards. But all hope is not lost. On the rise is a new interoperability standard called the Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. This is a standard which allows health data to be exchanged 
electronically across different organizations and systems. And the Fast Health Interoperability Resource Standard was developed by the Health Level 7 International Healthcare Standards Organization. And as the Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, or FIRE for short, continues to develop, this could act as a secure way for health data to be exchanged from a variety of sources of data, from the EMR or the EHR, data from the lab, and eventually patient-generated data and other mobile medical devices. So FIRE has also been developed to integrate APIs, or Application Programming Interfaces, which are basically tools which allow third parties to securely view databases of the primary organization. So APIs can be quite flexible and can allow third parties to read, write, or delete data. So for instance, when you're using the share button on Facebook or Twitter on another platform, what is happening is that the third party application through an API is accessing your Facebook or Twitter account to enable you and allow you to share the content you want. So this sharing of data in a secure way with the help of an API between the hospital and other external parties, this could be like other hospitals or labs, could be possible with the development of FIRE and can present an exciting push forward in the path to interoperability. For example, instead of just receiving information that a patient had a single seizure event, with this push towards interoperability by gaining the ability to analyze several sources of healthcare data, maybe from the patient, maybe you get information from the lab, maybe you get information from their Fitbit, this could help you to obtain a much broader medical history of the patient. So finally, with the rapid rise of telemedicine that we've seen due to the pandemic and other forms of digital healthcare data, I believe more and more patients want access to their health data. I'm probably not alone in that every single day in 2020, I was looking at graphs, looking at charts and the infection rate. People are starting to become more data literate and they want to have control of their data. I also think before we dive into wide scale use of medical Algorithms, we need to work on building effective interoperable systems which have the proper data linkages in place and have superior data quality and integrity. Of course, we cannot forget the importance of privacy and security and making sure that patient data is secure when pushing towards interoperability. I think that the future of interoperability lies in the hands of health informatics professionals who can provide necessary training leadership, and incentives to clinicians and government leaders to help reduce some of these real barriers and challenges facing interoperable healthcare systems. And to finish off this podcast episode, I would like to discuss an inspiring story which could not be done without the power of interoperability. So Aiden Deschamp, a 10-month-old baby, was screened for spinal muscular atrophy by the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in Ottawa just six days before Aiden was born. So he's the first baby in Canada with a disorder identified through Ontario's newborn screening program. So this screening program is done through a heel prick test shortly after babies are born and infants can be diagnosed with certain diseases days of birth. So as a result of the hard work done by the newborn screening Ontario team in collaboration with other genetic testing labs, and the interoperability which exists between these healthcare systems, the newborn screening program was able to reach out to the Deschamps family 10 days after Aiden was born. So with the hint interoperability between these healthcare systems, clinicians were able to rapidly identify a rare genetic disease and make a difference in the life of this family. Stories like these are just the tip of the iceberg of the benefit that can come from fully interoperable healthcare systems. And I hope to continue to report on advances in this topic in the future. So again, I would love to hear from you guys. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. What do you think are the biggest barriers to interoperability in healthcare? Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Health Analytic Insights podcast. I'd love to hear from you about topics I should cover in future episodes. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. Have a wonderful day.